I'm going to go through the arc secant a little more quickly than I did the arc sine and the arc tangent. All of these examples are basically the same and they are starting to border on tedious, although perhaps I shouldn't say that. The arc secant does have one thing about it that requires a little comment. The derivative of the arc secant involves an absolute value. one over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus one. And this isn't really what I think requires comment. What requires comment is that the integral formula we are going to get from this does not involve an absolute value, or rather I should say it does not involve an absolute value in the integrand. x times the square root of x squared minus one. However, there is an absolute value over here. So for example, this is problem 52 in the homework. I haven't assigned this, so we'll do it here. Sometimes it's not obvious how to start these problems, but this looks so much like an arc secant. I don't even know what I'd try other than this. I suppose you could see this composition and try letting you equal 5x squared minus 4. If you do see that, you'll find quickly that it doesn't work. So to get du, you need dx being multiplied by x. We do not need dx being divided by x. So that's a non-starter. Let's use this formula. And these problems can undeniably be slightly tedious just in terms of the number of steps. We're going to use u substitution. We've done this like three or four times already. 5x squared, that's the square root of 5 times x, that whole thing squared. But we need a one here, not a four. And 
using the same trick we have used a number of times, we'll factor a four out to make this a one. Then this four pulls nicely out of the square root. Two X the square root of five fourths X squared minus one. And then we'll pull this two out entirely. One half the integral. And because we've done a number of examples already, let's rush through this a little. We need a square here, so we can think rewrite this as the square root of five over the square root of four times x. That whole product squared. We have the minus one that we want. We do the inevitable. U equals the square root of five over two X. Then DU equals the square root of five over two DX. We don't quite have this, but we come very close to having it. I mean, we can put a constant here if we want to. We just divide by that same constant, so we don't change the integrand. And because we're here, we're getting a little crowded. Let me box this off. And we have the square root of five divided by two X. That entire expression squared minus one. This constant comes out. This is a du. Let's see. So there is here a comp the cation that we didn't run into before. We need to turn this into u. That's fine. This is u squared, just what I think we needed. But then we need to turn this x into you as well. I mean, if you look at this form, the, these variables match. 
that is not fatally difficult. If u equals the square root of five divided by two times x, then x equals two over the square root of five times u. And we have two over the square root of five times u times the square root of u squared minus one. Pull this out. So when we pull it out, this is in the denominator of this fraction. We get one over this fraction, which is the reciprocal of this fraction. And now we just need to finish up outside of the integral terms cancel. And then we take this integral. It's the arc secant of the absolute value of you, remember, plus our constant of integration, distributing this one half, what did I do? An arc secant of the absolute value of u. I just made a kind of weird copying error. u is the square root of five divided by two. one half of an arbitrary constant is an arbitrary constant. <laughs> I feel like I should almost apologize for this section. I feel like calculus two is smooth going and then we hit this section and suddenly we do that we're doing this very technical mathematics where we're adding in and removing these constants and we're factoring things out and it's just suddenly a lot of steps and things to keep track of that being said, I guess an apology doesn't really do much. It is part of the standard curriculum that you should be able to solve problems like this, even if the steps are undeniably a little tedious.